And welcome back to the Yes Functional Longevity Podcast, where we give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Hi, my name is Chris Borda, best-selling author and owner of Yes Fitness. And I want to thank you for taking some time to listen to what I have to say. I think I have an interesting topic this afternoon, and um, I always appreciate you taking some time from your busy day, especially as we get into this holiday season. So, first a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm just going to start right off with the problem we had last week. I apologize. We seem to have had a audio problem last week that we did not realize that we had. And we realized a little bit too late. I couldn't redo it. I couldn't repost it. It was how to survive Thanksgiving, actually, that particular day and your eating and things like that. So if you are interested in that, it will be up on its own page. Um, I think it's number 169 or 170 should be up for um, Friday. It will come out in our email. You can go there, and you won't be able to listen to it, but you can get the transcript. You'll be able to read it if you want just to check out those things that I felt that you needed to do to be able to get to that particular holiday and really pretty much any holiday, uh, especially when it comes to eating. Um, so I, I talked about that a little bit. So I apologize if you were uh, anxious to hear that and you weren't able to. But as you know, if there's going to be a technology problem, it's going to happen to us down here. Yes, fitness. It does seem to happen quite often. On top of that, we're going to start to announce our Christmas hours. So we, on Friday the 24th, we will be open for our semi-private training. And instead of our 6 a.m. class, we're going to run at 7 a.m. our – I just got the word that this, this is working today. Thank God for change. <laughs> so pardon me. So at 7 o'clock, we're going to run our amazing race. We've done it for years. I don't know, 15, 20 years now. It's a competition amongst our classes and our groups. And uh, it's a four-person team uh, to see who's the fittest. It's a lot of fun, uh, but we're doing it at 7 a.m., and then we're going to run our normal 9.30 Get Strong class on Friday morning. So those are the only thing we're doing. We're not going to do 6 a.m. class. We're going to run 7 a.m. Um, amazing race, and we'll fit some semi-private training sessions before and after that. So if you're interested in doing that, let me know. We do have uh, non-members participate in that. We have family members participate in that uh, it is a whole lot of fun and then we will be closed on christmas day um we'll be closed at noon on christmas eve uh, once we're done training we're out of here and we'll be back open monday morning for our normally scheduled sessions so that's what it's looking like for our holiday coming up and so today what i want to talk about is my nine top things to survive this holiday season. The nine's an odd number, right? And I kind of squished some things together. I didn't want to say that my 11 top th things to survive the holidays, so I kind of squished some things together, put some topics together here a little bit. But, the, you know, the holiday season brings a variety of emotions, all kinds of mixed emotions. And for some people, it is the absolute favorite time of the year. These four weeks, they look forward to it. They get pumped up. They have a great time. They look forward to seeing family and friends. They love buying gifts. They love receiving gifts. They love doing things for other people. So it's a really great time of the year for people. And then for others, it brings some sadness. It can bring some loneliness. It can bring some anxiety. It can bring, you know, loss of family members or friends. So for some, it's exciting to see those family members and friends. And for others, it can be disappointing and not so much fun. So I want to try to hit a, a real gamut of things here and try to help you to be able to survive this holiday feeling because feeling depressed or anxious, it, and it's not unusual. It, you know, we have a lot of dinners. We have parties. We have families and friends. We, have, we get all hyped up feeling how great this holiday season is going to be, and then it kind of gets let down. Or maybe, we, you know, we've gone through the divorce or we've lost some – some family members so it, again it's just a lot of mixed emotions so let's see if we can touch on a bunch of things here so number one on my list today is let's just kind of be realistic okay let's try not to expect too much from the holidays let's not there is no ideal holiday things happen weather occurs unfortunate things happen so 
let's just not have this idealized ver version of what the holiday should look like. So, because we can get very disappointed if it doesn't live up to that, if it doesn't live up to our expert expectations. So let's be realist realistic about it. Think about, you know, what it can really be and how you can really have it happen and understand and know that, you know, nobody's perfect and nothing's perfect. Family's not perfect. The situation may not be perfect. So let's just kind of get that out of our minds. Let's be realistic about what the holidays can be and what they should be rather than having these real idealistic things that in our minds and just kind of throw guilt right out the window. If it doesn't work out the way we want it to, um, let it be. We don't want any kind of unreasonable pressure on ourselves to make, to be happy, to rejoice, to make sure this is an awesome holiday, right? So just kind of throw that out of the way. Let's be realistic. Let's focus on the day, the, the time period that we're in right now, not yesterday, what, not maybe what if has happened previously or the good times that may have happened. Let's just kind of be focused on today, okay? It always helps us to, to be grateful for what we have and to be focused on where we're at right here, right now at this time period. Because sometimes when you start to revert back to old childhood patterns and old childhood thoughts and how we remember things should be or could be, next thing you know, we're disappointed. Next thing you know, we're depressed. Next thing you know, we're not having the good time that we should be having at this time of the year. So think about that. Think about being realistic. No guilt if something doesn't turn out the way that we think it should turn out or the way we want it to turn out. And live in the moment, okay? Live in the moment that you're at because that's really where we are in, at that particular moment. So number two, we're going to talk about food because food can be a huge topic. Uh, you know, it could be on and on and on and hours about it, but I just want to talk about some of the top things through this time period because you've worked all year long, you've worked out, you've got your body the way you want it to be, or you're where you're at and you don't want to get back to the way you were. So we're going to first think about food, eating and drinking in moderation, okay? Because COVID, I'm not saying it's over, but it's not going to be like last year where you don't have any parties or events. And there's, you're probably going to participate in more special events this year, maybe some dinners, uh, maybe go to friends' houses and things like that. So we want to make sure that we do this in moderation. Because kind of remember, eating and drinking may feel good at that time. It's a temporary feel good for pain, okay? And it can temporarily make you feel good from the holiday stress and the blues, but it can also lead to feeling guilty. So let's eat in moderation. Let's eat foods that we don't normally eat. Let's enjoy those foods at this time of the year. Whether you're at a party or an event or sitting down to dinner, enjoy those foods that you don't normally have. I've heard some great stories from clients from this past Thanksgiving where, they, you know, they sat down and really looked at the menu and said, these are the foods I'm going to have because these are the foods I don't normally have. I really want this because my mom makes great stuffing or, you know, I'm going to stay away from that over drinking because it really doesn't do anything for me other than make me not feel good the next day. Um, you know, I'm going to have those desserts I don't normally have. Hey, in my house, we don't have mashed potatoes and gravy very often, so I was really looking forward to that. So have the foods you don't normally eat and eat them slowly. If you eat them slowly, you're going to consume fewer calories and you're going to be able to enjoy it. So take a bite, enjoy the conversation in the area, wherever you're at, whether it's a party or at your home, and, and eat slowly. Make sure your mouth is empty before you put more food in it. And you'll find that you'll, you'll feel better when you're done because you're not going to be, you're not going to overeat. You're not going to be all bloated. Always we want to try to make sure that we be careful of our liquid calories. Alcohol can have a lot of calories in it. It can make us feel bloated. It's got tons of sugar in it. Um, so let's keep it to a moderation, okay? Maybe take a little bit smaller size than you would normally take. Have a drink of water between glasses. Think of it a little bit of a healthier way to, to, to consume your alcohol this holiday season. Um, make sure we're drinking our water, right? Make sure we're drinking our water as much as we possibly can. That's going to help us feel full. That's going to help all the processes in the body feel better. Um, take a look at our portion sizes as we choose the foods that we choose, especially um, if you're at an event and you're going to be there for a while. 
make sure we're just having some small portion sizes. Take your food and get away from the food if you can, if you're at a party or something like that. Don't plop yourself down right next to the, the bowl of chips and dip, okay? Don't be afraid to give, over, give away your leftovers. Get rid of some of those sweets in your house. Um, it's not necessary. If somebody came in and gave you, you got all kinds of candy come in. Hey, you know what? Don't eat that stuff. And my final one is when it comes to food, always make sure you enjoy it. But maybe start to think about um, maybe a new tradition, okay? Like these annual cookie exchanges. They're fun, but they can certainly wreak havoc on your diet, right? So maybe think about some different traditions. Maybe you don't do that. Maybe um, you come up with try to maybe come up with just some healthy uh, <coughs> Um, replacements for some of those cookies and if you do have the cookies again make sure to give them away bring some to work give some to friends only keep a few cookies at your house because you don't need them that often I know myself personally I spend the weekend before Christmas I make all kinds of cookies and what happens is on Christmas everybody has a couple here and there and next thing you know they're just sitting around for days to be plucked on here and there and that is Certainly adding some calories that most of us don't need. I know that I don't need myself either. So that's number two, we've talked about food. And number three is, you know, staying connected, okay? Make sure you're leaving time for fams and family and friends. We know how important it is for longevity. Relationships are number one. Whether it's relationships with people you don't know, that just saying a lot of people or getting together with friends and family, it's really, really important. If you're not going to be able to see them, make sure you give them a call. Talk to them. They need your support, just like you need their support. And if you, if you think like you're going to be alone and you don't want to be alone, do some volunteering. Go to the soup kitchen, maybe some um, group homes, uh, elderly homes, things like that, because you don't want to be alone. Okay? I don't think you really want to be alone during this time period. You may be depressed, and depression just leads to so many bad things. It leads to poor eating. It leads to poor sleep habits. It could lead to a substance abuse. It just depression is something you don't want to have to fight and battle. So if you feel like you're going to be alone and you don't want to be alone, there's ways to combat that if you don't have family or friends in the area. You, you can find some other places where you can get together with some people. So try to stay connected through the holidays. And number four, certainly this time of the year, everyone is in, typically in a great mood and they want to do things for others. So don't be afraid to ask for help. If you have too much to do, if you don't have time to get the decorations up, if you don't have time to do all that cooking, if you don't have time to go shopping, if you don't have time to make those cookies, don't be afraid to ask for help. People are willing to help especially this time of year, people are willing to help. And just explain it to them. Say, hey, you know, I can't get this done because if you're going to do that, okay, if you're not going to ask for help, we're going to lead to number five, which is stress. You don't want stress. And it's easy to feel stressed during the holidays. We want to make sure that we're focused on being positive, being relaxed, having fun. Make sure you take some time to pamper yourself, especially if you're feeling blue. Take some time out for yourself, okay? Go for a walk, a bubble bath. Maybe go to the movies, read a book, get a massage, exercise. Do something for yourself, okay? Because remember, this is your holiday as well, and you need to leave some time for yourself. So ask for help if you need help. Make sure we're not getting stressed. And if we are getting a little stressed, ask for help, and take some time for yourself. All these things are kind of intertwined here, right? Because if, you, if you're stressed, and you're not asking for help, things aren't getting done, you're going to become depressed, you're not going to do the things you want to do, you're going to overeat, you're going to overdrink, all these bad things happen, so stay away from the stress, okay? Stay away from the stress. Number six, which is something that happens this time of year, and we should be doing it all time of the year. The holidays can be a very tough time of the year for everybody for a variety of reasons. We want to make sure that we're doing something for others, okay? And it's really a great time of year to give back, although we should be giving back all the time. It's very therapeutic. It can really raise your spirits and the person's spirits that you're helping. So make sure that you're giving back at this time of year. Number seven, 
I'm not going to leave it to the last one. To your number seven, don't forget your workouts. Now, you know I talk about the fact that it's important to rest. It's important to not be stressed out about your workouts. But remember, the workouts are going to make you feel better. Workouts are going to give you energy. Workouts can be fun. Workouts are going to help you possibly get with some people that you enjoy, have fun with, and a group exercise, working out in a community like ourselves. It's going to help you burn some of those calories. It's going to help you sleep. It's going to help you just everything. Exercise is going to help. So try not to forget your workouts. Start at the beginning of the week and say, this is when I'm going to work out. Put it into your schedule. And if you need to do a workout at home, for those people who have been working out, you know you can get a workout at home. You can get a, just a simple Tabata workout at home. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Eight rounds, you're done. What does that take? It takes three minutes and 50 seconds. You can do jump squats. You can do kettlebell swings. You can run in place, jump rope, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a lot. And it's going to help you feel better. And it's going to help you just be happier. So try to get your workouts in. You know, if you come in here and you have a question about your workouts, you don't know what to do, you're going to be home, you can't get there, ask me. I'll, I'll get you some equipment. We'll make sure that you're getting your workouts in. Because that's how important they are. They're, they're just so important for everything. Sleep, depression, your mood, caloric expenditure, helping you move better, just your mindset, everything. So get those workouts in. Number eight, it is a time of year that we want to do things for people. We want to help people out. But don't be afraid to say no. Your schedule is going to fill up real quick if it hasn't already, right? And if you feel like you have to say yes to every single invitation, you might have three things going on on, on one evening, or, and you want to try to run around and get to each one. Or someone's going to ask you to take care of something that, that you just don't have time to do. Don't be afraid to say no. Number eight, don't be afraid to say no. Because if you say yes, it could lead to more stress, and we know what stress does. We just talked about it. It could be depression, overeating, over consumption of alcohol, poor sleep habits. Just don't stress yourself out. Say no. Alan Cosgrove always tells us in our mastermind, in our coaching group, if you say yes to something, you need to say no to something else. So if someone asks me to do something or take on a project or, or – do something for them. If I'm going to do a speaking event for somebody, I need to say no to something else to be able to prepare for that speaking event because you can't just keep loading more and more on. You only have so much bandwidth. You only have so much bandwidth. And number nine is sleep. We talk about sleep all the time. It's very interesting that um, we continue to talk about sleep all the time because of the amount of sleep that people get. And something to realize is not, I wear the aura ring. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it actually. Um, but if you go to bed and you're in bed for eight hours, you don't typically sleep eight hours. You sleep maybe seven hours. So if I know with my ring, if I, if I'm in bed for eight hours, I'm almost guaranteed that I'm only sleeping for seven hours. I'm not sleeping for eight hours. So make sure we get our sleep. Sleep starts the domino effect by sleep. We're going to feel good. We're going to have energy. We're going to be able to think better. We're going to make better decisions. We're going to be motivated. We're going to be less likely to give into to tough situations. We're going to have stronger willpower. Whereas on the other hand, when we don't get sleep, and it's simple, it's it's easy to do this time period, this time period, right? These four weeks, cramming so much stuff, whether we're staying up late to, to write Christmas cards or – we're staying up late wrapping or we're shopping online. And shopping online is a good idea because you don't know, stress to go to the stores. But if you're shopping online and you're up late trying to search for deals, um, you've got to do some baking. You've, you've got to do whatever it is. The days can get longer. And what's that going to do? It's going to cut into your sleep. And you really can't make it up on the weekend. Okay? And when you cut into that sleep, the domino effect occurs. You're tired. <coughs> you're going to start making poor eating decisions. You're going to be cranky at work. You're not going to produce as well at work. You're not going to want or have the energy to exercise. You're going to be probably crabby at home to your loved ones. You might start to get a little bit depressed. So just non-negotiable. Get your sleep, okay? Get your sleep. So there are my nine things. We're just going to 
quickly review them. Okay, I'm not going to go through each of the things, but number one, we're going to be realistic. We're not going to get guilty. We're going to be realistic about this holiday. Okay? Don't idealize it. Don't be guilty if it doesn't happen. Number two, food. All kinds of things about food. Let's just be moderate. Let's eat slowly. Let's enjoy the food while we're eating it, okay? Number three, stay connected. It's so important to stay connected with people. It's going to help us stay grounded. It's going to help us feel good about ourselves. It's going to help other people feel good. And if you don't know someone, okay, and you need some support, there's volunteers out there, there's soup kitchens, whatever to do, so you're not alone, okay? You're not alone. If you don't have those connections with you, you're not alone. Pick up a phone and call somebody. Number four is don't be afraid to ask for help. Because we're going to get overworked. Next thing you know, we're going to be stressed. And number five is don't stress. Do the things you need to do to de-stress. Whether it's pamper yourself, ask for help, say no to something, try not to get stressed out. Because stress, again, starts that domino effect. Feel good and do something for others. Always a great thing to do, especially this time of year, because this can be a difficult time of the year for a lot of people. Get your workouts in. Don't be afraid to say no so we don't get stressed out. And number nine is get your sleep. So there you have it. Those are my nine things that you need to do and think about. You may not need all of those. You may need just one or two of them. Food might be your issue. Being alone might be your issue. Um, Stress might be your issue. So you need to de-stress, whatever it might be. But those are the things I think you need to think on, think about and stay focused on. And um, you'll be sure to enjoy this holiday season more than maybe you thought you could because there is still COVID and we still have this, this, this hanging over our head, right? But it's going to be a great holiday season. I know it is. I know it is for me and my family, and I hope it is for you and your family. If you have any questions or need help with any of this, contact me, walk through my door, email me, text me, leave a message right here. We'd be more than happy to help with this time of the year, any time of the year. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps. And uh, you guys all have a great evening, and I will see you again next week. Have a great night.